Welcome to Mission to Inspire, where we share life experiences in our careers, personal lives, society, culture, religion, finance, family, and much more. Meet your host, Shola Ajabadi, as she takes you on a ride to fuel your inspiration. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mission to Inspire. My name is Shola, and we've got our wonderful guest here with us today. Her name is Tracy Habert. Hi, Tracy. How are you? Great. How are you doing this morning? Or for me, it's this morning. How are you doing? <laughs> Great. It's afternoon here. Yes. <laughs> I know you're back in Texas, which is about six, seven hours a time difference to how it's here, I think. I think it's six, but I may be wrong. Yeah, I think, it, I think it's six as well. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> Great to be here. Glad to be here. Thank you. Um, so we're going to start with, can we know you better? I'm going to ask you random questions around you. <laughs> and we want you to answer us as sincerely as you can. Okay. okay. First question, tea or coffee? Coffee. Coffee. I do, I do drink green tea every day for the health benefits because it really does help with heart disease and all sorts of things. But mm -hmm. coffee is my go-to. Okay. Great. I, I love coffee. I take coffee. Um, but I love the spiced coffee. Mm. <laughs> but green tea is way healthier. So yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So for vacation, beach vacation or mountain getaway? Love the mountains. Matter of fact, I just came back from the Grand Canyon where we backpack, backpack to the bottom of the Grand Canyon, which backpacking for y'all that don't do that, you carry your <laughs> tent, everything on your back, and yeah. you hike to the bottom of the Grand Canyon, you uh -huh. camp a couple of nights, and then you hike back out. So we just oh. did that, but I love the mountains. Wow. I don't, I've never climbed the mountains before. I'm so scared of heights. <laughs> oh, you probably wouldn't want to do something like that then. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of reading novels um or books fiction or not fiction non-fiction and i just i love to read that's one of my favorite things to do and non-fiction just does i've never been one for fiction which is very interesting but love me some non-fiction ah okay great and in terms of our adorable <laughs> pets <laughs> <laughs> which do you like dog or cats okay this is going to make some people mad but i'm a dog person i oh. love 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 dogs don't care for cats <laughs> you don't oh my goodness cats are so <laughs> lovely they're so cute so i got to <laughs> yes yes are you a morning person or a night owl I am a morning person. I This morning I was up at 4.30 in the morning and ready to get my day started. I've always been that way. I feel like if I sleep too long, the world's going to pass me by. But mm -hmm. now at night, I'm asleep like 8.30, 9 o'clock at night watching TV. So I fall asleep every night watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So we know you better now. We know you're a morning person. Mm -hmm. If we want to get to you, we'll come knocking on your door 4.30 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> yes. Or I'll be working out. So if I'm not at home, then, uh, you know, I'll be at the gym. <laughs> and when it's early this season, we know where to get you. We know you'll be mountain climbing. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> yep. And also in the evenings, we know that you'll be doing, you'll be, you'll be walking your dog. So you will not be sitting on your couch with the cats. You'll be walking the dog. So... <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for answering those questions. So we we feel we know you. We know you better now. Thank you. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Tracy Herbert, she's a prominent figure in the field of health and wellness. Um, she's a transformational health and longevity coach. She's a best-selling author, professional speaker, and she's also a podcast host, just like myself. Perhaps she's, she does it better than I do. I don't know, but she's... <laughs> You're doing fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> she has actually established herself as a leading authority 
on this subject. So she's dedicated to um, she's dedicated to diabetes advocacy and a personal belief in living life to the fullest, regardless of age or diagnosis. So, which resonates with our audience in the whole world world. So with a mm -hmm. background in philosophy, she empowers individuals from all backgrounds to take charge of their health and well-being. So um, our mission, which is very interesting, is to instill hope and provide practical strategies so that others can witness the possibility of a healthier and happier life, mm -hmm. which I think is very interesting. And we'll be talking just around that today. So today we'll be talking about transforming tragedy into triumph, inspiring strategies for overcoming adversity. So she will be talking us through our story so she's been there, she's done it, um, and she'll be telling us a story and how we can actually empower ourselves through the adversity that she's passed through. So we would then leave the stage for you. <laughs> to introduce yourself if you want to say anything more, um, and then we'd like to hear your story. I'm Tracy Herbert, like you mentioned, but at 17 years old, I was lying in a hospital bed fighting for my life. Mm -hmm. I was so scared. The noise of the beeping, the, you know, the IV stuck in me, the heart monitors, everything. 17. And the doctor walks in with his hands on his hips. And he said, young lady, you have juvenile diabetes, oh which is now called type one. He said, you're going to be dead in 20 years. Ooh, You're going to die with horrible complications. You will go blind. You're going to have your legs amputated Jesus and Christ. you're never going to be able to have children. Oh, no. And then he turned around and walked out of that ICU room. Hmm. And I didn't get to ask questions, but most importantly, I had no hope. And I started realizing my life is over. What am I going to do? 17 years old. And about three or four months later, I went to a movie theater and I tried to get some food. Oh, I didn't try to get food because with juvenile diabetes now called type one, we were on a very restrictive diet back in the 1970s. Hmm. And I couldn't get anything except I tried to get a cup so I could get some water out of the drinking fountain. Mm -hmm. Now, this was way before diet soft drinks, way before bottled water. And the concession stand clerk said, no. And I said, oh, well, I'll be glad to pay for the cup. Mm -hmm. And she said, no. She looked at me like I was crazy. I ran out of that movie theater screaming and crying, saying, why me? Why me? All the way home, I'm crying. I got to bed and I'm laying there again, feeling horrible about myself, giving up. And I said, Tracy, you've got two choices. You can be better or you can be bitter. What are you going to choose? And at that moment, I said it out loud, because when we speak words that are positive out loud, it's thin, it sticks with you. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to be better. And for that moment on now, 47 years, mm -hmm. I say every day, I'm going to do something every day so I can be better with my health, with life, with everything. And so I started as a high school senior going into a medical school library and researching everything I could on health and well and living well despite my diagnosis mm. and i'm so thankful because of my mindset which i'm going to get into what we can do to all improve our health and live a healthier life but i started saying i can do this i can do this mm. and i was taking nine shots a day every single day and i it was really struggling with my health and about 20 years into my diagnosis, when I was supposed to be dying, no complications, of course. Mm. And I started thinking, what can I do to celebrate my diagnosis? Because we have two choices. We can be bitter or we can be better. Mm. Even though I know I'm going to live with this disease for the rest of my life, unless there's a cure, 
but I started doing something to celebrate. So every decade at that point, the first one I did was I did a bicycle contest. The next one I did 10 years later, I did a triathlon, mm. even though I'm afraid of water. Mm. But then is my 40th anniversary of my diagnosis, not my age, because if you can add 40 and 17. So by this time, I'm 57 years old. I was fit. There you go. I had to have a calculator for that one. No, I'm joking. (laughs) But what I did was I got on my bicycle and I rode from San Francisco, California at the Pacific Ocean all the way to New York City to the Brooklyn Bridge at the Atlantic Ocean, which in miles, that's 3,527 miles. I did it not only to celebrate, but to provide hope for people saying, hey, you know what? Yeah, I wasn't supposed to have children, but guess what? Not only do I have children, but I'm a grandma. So as a grandmother at 57 years old, having lived with diabetes for 40 years, I rode my bicycle every single day and had amazing results for being able to provide people with hope because and this was in 2017, without hope, we have nothing. And it really started, I I began more and more about hope because even though I'm in great health, thank you, thank you, thank you. But I do take very good care of myself. Mm. But I started realizing, you know, people are down their dumps, even in their young 20s and 30s, because they think I'm getting old, I can't do something, or I have a diagnosis or whatever that is, or I'm not good enough or whatever that is. My body's not healthy, or I may be a little heavier. I may be too skinny. I may be too tall. I may be too short. We've all heard those excuses. But I said, guys, guess what? We can do it every day, do something to provide hope and quit thinking the negative stinking thinking. So the question people always ask me, especially doctors, because when I speak and I speak all over the world, Mm. but when one time when I've spoken or several times when I speak to medical professionals, the first question they ask me is, how are you still alive? How do you not have any complications? And what are you doing? And if you don't listen to anything else today to this podcast, hear this one thing. You've got to have my 3M formula. And it's so simple. Mind, we have to have the right mindset and realize, yeah, things are challenging. Things are difficult, but we can overcome anything. And mouth, learn to eat to live. Don't live to eat. And move, we got to get off our chairs and move more. Just simple things. One step here, one step there equals two steps. And then the next time you look down the road, you're like, look at me, I've got a half a block or two blocks or a mile, whatever works for you. But when you start really realizing these three M's, how they all have to work together, not only do you have better health, which you do, but you have more energy you have you're more productive that's one of the things that people always laugh at me they're like boy you don't act like you're in your mid-60s I'm like why not I mean you know this is what you're supposed to be like in your mid-60s that's what really transformed my life about 30 years ago when I really developed this mind mouth and move concept which is what I wrote my first book on is the mind got to have the right mindset mouth we have to learn to eat to live don't live to eat and move again, like I said, take the stairs instead of the elevator, park the car further away, go for a walk. Any of those three things together is going to really start making a transformation in your life. Like you'll never believe it's possible because it really is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much for that inspiring um, story journey of yours. Wow. I mean, a lot of us, go through very little things and we just sit at home and you know (laughs) we don't want to do anything but (laughs) hearing that (laughs) what you went through when you were 17 at that age you're so young Mm -hmm. taking that in processing it and for you to turn it around to make it a positive um, impact in your life and to those people around you those people um, around you and you're actually benefiting the world you're telling the story and you've written three books and I know they're all centered around what, the things that you do the hope that you wanted us to have 
mm-hmm. and inspiring us about what we can do instead of you know just sitting around not doing anything just mourning <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing your story and journey you said mm-hmm. you have children now mm-hmm. yes. wow yes and they Again, I wasn't supposed to have children. I'm a grandmother. I'm so thankful. But if I can offer one piece of um, encouragement, because you're all about hope also and Mm -hmm. inspiring people, is I met a lady in Sacramento, California, while I was waiting for the light to turn green, while I was riding my bicycle across the United States. And I just had that gut feeling. You know, sometimes you get a gut feeling that somebody Mm -hmm. needs to talk. Mm -hmm. And I got off my bike and I started talking to her. And she was a lovely, lovely young lady. And she was probably in her early 30s, a beautiful smile, but she was morbidly obese. And she started telling me, I have to wait for my brother to come pick me up. Even though her house was only like four houses away, she -hmm. could not walk from the bus stop to her house. And she, you know, she kept saying, I just can't do anything. Well, the health coach in me came out and I said, could you walk to your, your driveway? And just for the split second, she said, I think I can. I said, walk to your end of your driveway, rest and then walk back and then start doing something like that every day. That's why I keep saying small steps equals big changes. And by the time I got into New York City, Mm -hmm. I got the lovely text message from this woman. And she said, not only have I lost so much weight, I can't believe I did, but I just signed up for my first 5K run. A walk. And she was saying, you know, I couldn't even walk two or three houses down to my house. And now I'm doing my first 5k. And that is truly amazing. And she just needed somebody, it could have been anybody, but I was so thankful it was me that I got to talk to her. But she just needed a little bit of help and a little bit of strategy just to take that first step. And when you take that first step in whatever journey you're in, it may not be health. It may be starting a business. It may be, you know, doing something crazy, like going for a backpacking trip or something, but you take that first step. And I always say that first step is always the hardest because you don't know if you can do it, but the second step, it gets easier. And that's what this young lady did in Sacramento, California. And she is just a changed woman with hope because without hope, we have nothing. That's true. Without hope, we have nothing. Yeah. So how can we connect with you if we want to? I, I'm on all social media platforms, pretty much. Tracy Herbert, T-R-A-C-Y, H-E-R-B-E-R-T, or on Instagram on Tracy Herbert Wellness. But more importantly, you can go to my website, tracyherbert.com. You can also watch a short video of my bicycle ride. It's like a three minute clip, but I have free resources because my mission is in life is not just to provide hope, but to help people make minor tweaks in their health where they could have the energy in their forties, fifties, sixties, eighties, whatever their age is Mm -hmm. to have the energy and to be healthier than they were the day before. So I offer some great free resources because together we're stronger. And if you get these resources, then you might be able to help your next door neighbor or somebody you met at the at the bus stop, whatever that is, but tracyherbert.com. And it's real easy at the top of my website to find the free resources. Thank you. Thank you for that. I would put that in the, in the uh, description and in the show notes anyway. So for people to be able to reach you if they want to. Okay. Thank you. So um, what personal strengths or qualities do we tap into to help us navigate through the challenges or the challenging times and um, transform this tra- tragedy into triumph? Well, it, it doesn't happen overnight. No, I mean, nothing happens overnight. And for me, it was probably a year and a half before I even got over the depression at 17 that I found out. But wow. when you start making minor changes, and I'm a very positive person, not all the time, but keep positive things around your house, around your office, notes, listen to positive books. You know, there's so many great YouTube videos out there Mm -hmm. and just start making some minor shift in in your mind, your thinking, because getting rid of that stinking thinking Mm -hmm. is so challenging, especially after what we've all gone through the last few years with 
horrific things around the world with with COVID and everything. You know, we were all kind of feeling like the world was coming to an end. And now it's fun to see people excited again, saying, okay, we're out in nature again. We're out around people. But when you start thinking horrible things in your mind, it's really hard to do anything. So keep the positive things. Wake up every morning and say, I can do this, whatever this is for you today. Before you put your feet on the floor, you just make, I can do whatever, you're blank. For me, it's, I can help one person have hope and a healthier, healthier life. That's what I do every morning before I get out of bed. What can I do to help one person? And that person may be somebody I meet online or maybe somebody I meet in the grocery store. But find your why. When you know your why, why do you get out of bed in the morning? What helps you to realize, okay, this is what my why is. And maybe it's watching your kids or grandkids grow up, or maybe it's riding your bicycle around the block, or maybe it's giving a talk that you're so afraid to talk, but do something to start making a change. Don't let that fear stop us because when we let that fear stop us, we're not going to make the progress that we need to do. And when you start really eating foods, Mm -hmm. believe it or not, I know people laugh and they roll their eyes at me, but when you start eating foods that help your body and doesn't hurt your body, then you start having more energy. Then you start thinking, oh, wait a minute, I can. So when you eat something that you know is not healthy, Mm -hmm. see how you respond a few hours later. You know, you start thinking, oh, I need a nap or, you know, something like that. But when you eat things that really help your body, yes. then that afternoon or evening, you have so much more energy. Mm. And that energy also helps you going from tragedy to triumph. I mean, it, it's all related. But again, I can't stress it enough. It all starts with the mind. In the mind. Thank you so much. So everything is in the mindset, mm-hmm. basically. Thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you. So how can we reframe our perspective um, on adversity and view it as an opportunity for personal growth, resilience, and ultimately triumph? Mm, That's a great question. And I, for me, it was at the movie theater where Mm. I was not allowed a cup. Who would have thought, you know, that would have the impact on my life still to this day in my 60s that yeah. it did in my as I was a teenager at 17. Mm. But realizing that was the best thing that happened to me. And my doctor not even giving me any hope. That was really good because I had to dig from within mm-hmm. and say, okay, I can do this. But you when you change from being bitter to better. It really does make a difference, but it doesn't happen overnight. That's why I was saying positive things, keeping being around positive people have, I always say, who's in your group, you know, those people in your group who encourage you to say, Hey, are you down today? Are you up? You know, those people in your group that say, Hey, did you go for a walk today? Or did you go for a run? Or those people that said, "Mm, should you have had that donut instead of an apple or something? Those kind of people will really help you get started but it all, you got to muster it up from inside and you just have to take control of your own thoughts and say, I can do it. And, you know, as long as we have breath, we can make change yeah. and that change can either be for the good or the bad. And so, you know, it, it, it takes some time. It is a mindset thing. And I still, to this day, fight that stinking thinking that says, oh, you can't do this, but mm-hmm. you have to reframe your thinking. And again, you can do it. You just have to start working on it and making it a priority. And that may be your why. Why do I want to do this? Well, maybe I need to get positive first or at least try to be, you know, a little bit more positive than I was. That's true. That's true. Thank you so much. Thank you for answering that question. Thank you. So um, listening to your story, which is actually very empowering and is an example of, you know, as an example of who was over come all this tremendous adversity and achieve this triumph and you're inspiring and giving that you know that 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 story of hope to people what are the aspirations but what are your aspirations now though because i know that over the years you have aspirations and then they must have grown over the years what are your aspirations now my aspirations, I, I'm trying to plan, and trying is not a good word, but I'm planning some kind of an epic um, celebration 
milestone for my 50th anniversary of my diagnosis, which is coming up in a couple of years. And I'm thinking about, I really would like to do the, you know, maybe the Camino de Santiago, you know, the pilgrim walk, or maybe ride my bicycle, maybe go, I don't know. But I'm working on that now. I just haven't come up with something because I am a goal setting person. Mm -hmm. And I tend to I like to celebrate things. And so I'm just trying to figure out what to do. I've had several people ask me to do certain things, but I'm, um, I'm still holding back to decide exactly what it's going to be. So but we, you, we will know near at the time. Yes. Yes. Because <laughs> I haven't quite decided it yet, but again, it's to keep me moving, to keep me thinking positively yeah. and Again, to inspire others to never, ever, ever give up hope. To give up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So that's it then. We we, we are inspired not to give up hope. She always <laughs> olden. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. So uh, what practical steps um, can we implement then to take control of our circumstances and learn from your challenges? Well, I'm a firm believer in journaling. And if it's something that's very painful, mm -hmm. you write it down and then, you know, light it on fire, obviously in a safe environment, you know, and then let it burn. And then you're letting go of those negative feelings or negative things that you have in your life. Mm -hmm. But it goes back again to the mind, mouth and move the three M's, because when you start making those changes and you start getting rid of the things that are internally bothering you and reducing stress and sleeping more, your whole life is just transformed. I, I wish I could just tell you one step, but it's a, you know, it's a multiple year, multiple day, whatever, however you want to look at it, but start making small changes today, right now. And then you'll be shocked at what you see in whatever your struggle, whatever your struggles and challenges are in another couple of weeks and in a month and then a year. But I'm a firm believer in journaling because journaling is so important and it gets us off thinking of our, you know, getting out of our minds and maybe, you know, writing down something before you go to bed at night that mm -hmm. you're thankful for, because mm -hmm. then you're going to bed and you're sleeping. And you're thinking of thankfulness Thankful. instead of something negative that's going on in your life. It's true, which is true. And you know what we think about before we go to bed actually it affects our sleep and the mm -hmm. dreams as well. So, it yeah. does. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that advice. Thank you so much. And then, um, you know, your experience of overcoming tragedy and adversity. I know you've been using um, you've been using the the uh, positive impact to transform um, that message to people to to inspire them to for them to have hope and mm. never to give up but mm. what else what else what else what what else can you do what else have you done uh, you know which has created positive impacts in the lives of people around you and even to us your your listeners right now i am um it, it, this is this is a free thing but smile and smile at other people because when we smile, it helps our endorphins, mm -hmm. but it also helps people around you realize that, wait a minute, she's happy or he's happy. I should do that too. And be kind because mm -hmm. in this world, we've got to be kind. I mean, hey, y'all, we all live, we may live in different parts of the world, but we're all on the same planet that we, you know, this planet rock that we live That's on, true. you know, That's and true. when we really smile and are kind, it makes such a difference. And we think it makes difference for other people, mm -hmm. but it really does it for us. That's what, and treat people the way you want to be treated. That's, you know, life is too short to be rude to people, yeah. to be mean, especially to ourselves. I mean, we also have to change our stinking thinking about ourselves too. That's very true. That's very true. Treat other people the way you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's just that sums it up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much. Any inspiration or advice for us today? Never give up. Never Keep going. Give up. Keep, Keep going. going and never ever give up. It, there's okay. some bad days. There's some good days. Mm. But just focus on doing something every day to change your life and whatever that is, mm -hmm. and you're going to start seeing instant. I mean, almost instantly, but 
you really have to start making the changes. I wish I could do it for your listeners. I wish I could, but it's up to us to make those kind of changes. And like I said, be kind, be happy, smile, watch some funny shows or something, you know. <laughs> That's very true. Keep smiling. And you know, smiling is medicinal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For people that don't want to have um, wrinkles, to hell in their lifespan and they should keep smiling <laughs> that's you, right you're 50 57 no that's what i was when i rode my bike across the country no i'm 64 now you're 64 now mm -hmm. look at mm -hmm. you look at your face it's great <laughs> i eat very carefully there's food food can damage our skin more than anything else <laughs> So at 64, I want to look young, just like you. <laughs> Start today. Start now. Don't wait until then. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Thank you for coming on our show. <laughs> it's been so much fun. We've laughed. We've smiled. And hopefully we've encouraged some people. Yes, definitely. We've encouraged some people. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Until next time. It's bye from me and from Tracy. <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today on Mission to Inspire. Subscribe if you have not already done so. Like, comment, leave a message. Let's stay connected. Let's jointly inspire the world.